Uh, where, you want to come give yours? This is a nurse. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's who it was. Okay. Thank you. About two Wednesdays ago, I came and I sat in that chair, and um, one of the lay ladies that was here prayed for me. And I'm a nurse, so my back. I work 12-hour shifts. Um, I started the 12-hour shifts about a year and a half ago. And I know God didn't want me to, but I was already scheduled, so I did. I think it's because God was watching out for me, because eight hours is about all a nurse can really take on her feet, and you really don't sit. So my back really started hurting, and I, in the morning I stretch. I know enough that you stretch, because you're pulling patients up, and you're going to hurt yourself. I got to the point where I couldn't stretch in the morning. Well, she prayed for me, and I could stretch the next day. But it left in three days. So I was like, oh, no. So um, Pastor Patton said, when you get a healing and it goes away and you start to feel pain, don't claim the pain. Um, just claim your healing. So he prayed for me. And I said, I can tell you right now if I'm healed. And I got on the floor and I stretched and I didn't have any pain. So, yeah, that, that's, that's awesome to me. You know, our God loves us enough to do that. And um, as far as Gene Richards, because I know I, you guys were praying for him, and I really appreciate that. I called him Sunday, and he had gotten out of the hospital again. He had diarrhea Wednesday, and he couldn't come. He ended up going to the hospital. And then Sunday, he felt really good, and he was so excited to come tonight. But I called him three times, and he didn't answer his phone. But Pastor Patton said we could all, well, he didn't say it tonight, but I know I heard him say it. We can claim our faith right now for this guy all together. So if we want to just cast out any pain, if you want to agree with me right now, we'll pray for him. Thank you, guys. Um, we just uh, thank you, Father God. Um, we cast out any pain that's in Gene. Well, I told you his name. I shouldn't have said, but I've been praying for him. So thank you, God, um, for Gene. We just cast out any pain in his body, and we take authority over you, you demon spirits of um, suicide, we cast you out. We take authority over you, you demons of pain. We cast you out. And any um, arthritis, we cast you out. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command that body to come into alignment and to be healed in Jesus' name, that his mind would come um, back to its original creation, what it was created to be. We cast out any spirit of depression that's coming against Gene, and I can really sense the depression spirit on this man. So I cast you out, you demon spirit of depression, and I command you to go. I thank you, Father God, for the health and the healing that you are placing into his body even now as your family, your church speaks. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think she got it. <laughs> I think she got it. You know, keep, keep your confession positive, always. Don't give up on that. And Scott and I had a conversation earlier tonight. You know, those things have to, to just stay uh, positive because you start speaking negative and the stuff won't go away. It'll revert. It's just that easy. The hunters would tell you that. It's in the book somewhere. I, I couldn't find it tonight for you. But you've got to stay positive. You've got to believe. You've got to hold on to it. There's been literature back there how to hold on to your healing, right? Uh, quote those scriptures. Stand on them. You've got the power. You've got the tools. I've come to give you excitement, as I told you before, but I've come to give you the tools. So you, you, you're equipped. This is an equipping church. So we're trying to give you everything we know how, you know, picks and shovels and rakes and everything, whatever you need to get the job done. All it takes is you to step out and do it. Step out. Ava's told me, and I won't call her up, but she stepped out. The injury at her exercise class the other day. And then the lady was supposed to go home and put on an ice pack. Am I going right here? 
And she put, wrapped it up in a towel and put it on the kitchen table, went in and sat down, what, watching television or something, I don't know. And her husband comes by and says, what's it doing out there on the table? Well, she didn't need it. <laughs> Avis, Avis had prayed for her, laid hands on her in the car because she had had a, she had, what, had a hip replacement or a broken hip. Yeah. 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 Yep. As you, as you told me, he, he, he heard the thump, right, when she hit the floor. <laughs> as you're going, as you're going, keep your ears open. You're going you're gonna to be amazed just with what I've been able to give you in a short, because this is about half of what I normally teach that I've done here in this series. But you're going you're gonna to have new antennas. You're gonna <laughs> We're going to have to do something with her. She's too... Entirely too happy, you know what? <laughs> you've got to pour cold water on her or something. But you're going to start hearing and seeing things you never noticed before. People going by you, sneezing, coughing, gro groaning, you know, limping, whatever, and you're going to go, mm, you know. <laughs> Your radar is going to start working, okay? It will. You're going to, and it's not going to take that much time. It's just a few minutes. If anything, what Charles was doing there tonight, you know, he was... He was covering a lot of areas, doing a lot of things. Well, you've heard me do it too. Other times you can just say, be healed in the name of Jesus. You know, if you're in an elevator, whatever. Airports, they stop in airports. Somebody, you know, severely damaged, sitting in a wheelchair or whatever. France has been known to go by and just tap them on the head and keep right on walking. And they get up out of the wheelchair and walk off. Now, in that one case I can think of, there was something like three years later, it finally found its way back to them in a testimony that that had happened. They remember that lady tapped me on the head as she walked by. Didn't know what she was doing. She didn't stop. So the power is there. You have to just learn to let it loose, okay? You're a container. You're a vehicle. And I think God requires us to travel to somebody that's in need. And what have you got to lose? Yes, ma'am. Are, are you feeling a, a new containment? Yes. Are, are you? Do you know how many were healed that came to Jesus? How many? All. Say all. 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 Now you're Christ-like. You're imitating Christ, and that's okay. That's what Christian is. You're allowed to imitate. Do what Jesus did. It's okay. You're not sacrilegious. You're not going to burn in hell and fire. You're doing what Jesus did. Get a grip, guys. This is easy, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to put that into you in spoonfuls or shovels full because I'm running out of time. But, <laughs> but praise God. Is, is it not fun to have all this going on? I'm going to do some reading because I want to give you a little overshadowing, if you will, and some uh, uh, just reminders uh, of things that you need to be doing. Uh, there's a section, well, let me read that first. I got it marked back here. I wanted to do this. I said I wanted to do this last. This is uh, several categories of the process from the time you say, may I pray for you, okay? And then the rest of what you do. Get into the habit of this. You may not do every piece of this, but get into the habit of most of it. Part of it is don't assume anything. Now, you all have grown up in my generation. I know what assume used to stand for, but we don't talk about that anymore, okay? <laughs> but don't assume anything. If somebody walks up to you with an arm in a sling, or they're walking on crutches, oh, dear Jesus, in the name of God, you just need heal for them. <laughs> and you lay hands on them, they may have heart problems. 
huh? Think about it. Ask them what they want God to do for them. Okay? Because you don't know until you ask, and you can make a real fool out of yourself, and you just attack them, just what you think is wrong. So don't, don't assume. Ask questions. Doctor doesn't do that, very often anyway. <laughs> Doctors don't do that. They set you down and say, what's wrong? What did you feel? When did that start? How long does it hurt? What happened to you? Did you fall? You've heard me do the same thing up here. I'm copying that because it works. You need to find out so you can pray specific. Ask the person to whom you are ministering what his problem is. What did his doctor say is wrong? I don't care if his doctor is a chiropractor, a medical doctor, or whatever it might be. You know, just for allergies. Oh, I'm on page 153 in the back of the book there. Don't forget, it says. Yeah, if you want to follow me and underline them. Make notes, take notes, whatever. These are good things. It's important to know all the medical details of an illness to be able to minister healing. It says it's not. I read it wrong. It's not. So you don't need every hairy detail, okay, so to speak. But you need to know the specifics and what the doctor has said or what medication you're on or whatever. So just ask a few questions, whatever they're, they're willing to uh, uh, share with you. It's important to know what the problem is and to address the problem itself rather than the symptoms. Now, you've heard me, and you've been doing it. Now, I've listened to you that have come up here and, and done this, or you've done it at home, whatever. When you're casting out things that, that are uh, gross, for instance, like tumors, you cause them to die at the root source. Okay, You go to the root source rather than where, it's look, where you're seeing it. Cancer is the same way. I don't care where it manifests, where the doctor said it is, he saw it, he put it on the screen, whatever. It's the root source. You want to kill the root. You want to pull roots up out in your garden, in your yard, in dandelions. you got to get the whole root. You can't cop off the top, right? Next morning, you'll have another head on it. So get, get, get interested in what's going on. When you ask someone what his disease is, say, that's easy. Now, we already covered that, but this is after the answer, regardless of how difficult this condition may sound. Remember, the most fatal disease is easy when God steps in. It's, God is amazing. I, we, we, we've witnessed so many things. Rick and I saw amazing stuff happen down in Hermitage the other night. Once you have ministered healing, have the person put his faith into action. It is, if his back is hurting, have him bend his back. If the problem is the elbow, have him bend his elbow. Problem is arthritic in the shoulders, knees, have him swing him around. Make sure the person says, thank you, Jesus. I've driven that home. I hope you remember that. Written it down. Underline it here. Thank you, Jesus. That cements it. There's many cases that hunters talk about where they would have healed somebody. They felt the pain go but they didn't say thank you. They walked away. By the time they sat down, they had the pain back. Or by the time they got in the car to go home, they had the pain back. And if they didn't take the instructions like I've got back there on the table for you, how to hold it, how to speak against that, how to come, come you know, say, I have been healed. Of course, first comes the scripture, 1 Peter 2.24 says, we were healed. So you're not, you're not making up anything. We were healed. So claim it. It's yours. People will often say it still hurts. When you ask them how much pain is gone, they will say 95%. And listen to this carefully if you haven't written it. But there's still a little bit left. We'll encourage them to thank God for the 95% that's gone because uh, when they do, often the last 5% will be manifest. If not, there's another scenario, I don't know if, I think it goes on to say it here, I'll just say it, is you thank it for what is there, what's, what's available, what you've witnessed, what you feel, and then thank God, thank Jesus for the remainder that's coming. So if it's 50%, you thank him for the 50% I've got, and I thank you for the 50% that's coming that'll make it 100%. Thank you, thank you works, thank you works. Thank you, works. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, look for the absence of pain, not the pain. That's hard to do, but it works. 
Again, these things aren't written in here for just maybes. They've worked. You don't look for the pain. When you get up to walk after your back's been healed or your, your foot or your ankle, you don't say, I'll bet it's going to hurt when I step. No, you, you, you look for the absence of pain. It's not psychological. It works. You're not a doctor, so don't try. <laughs> You're not a doctor, so don't try to practice medicine. Do not prescribe medication or recommend that people go off their medication. <coughs> Is that me? Oh, that's somebody. All right. Yeah, don't play doctor. Don't embellish what you do know to do that we've taught. Just keep it simple. Joan Hunter has coined a new phrase since she took over and started traveling the world, and it's KISS. Keep it simple, saints. I know you're all thinking something different. Keep it simple, saints. KISS. Okay? The simpler, the better. God knows what is going on. Like I just said there about Charles. He put his hand on the back up here by the neck and commanded new discs in there. But it happened down in his, in his tailbone, right? God knows. Do not make a diagnosis. Let the individual to whom you are ministering tell you what the problem is. And then you just go from there. That's, that's your best source. And that's where their mind is. That's what they need healed of is what they've been told rather than what you might try to stumble into. Whenever you cast out a spirit, do it in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not thus saith Richard or Debbie, even as glorified as she seems to be over there. You do it. You do it. <laughs> you do it in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, there are two things necessary for healing to be accomplished. The name of Jesus, say it over and over again. You can't say it too much in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's where it comes from. We're, we're just delivery boys and girls, okay? That's all we are, if you want to make it real simple. We just take the payload to where the person that needs help, and we then apply it like you lower your tailgate, and you take a box off, and you give it to the customer or whatever. You're just delivering, okay? Don't take responsibility beyond that. That's all you do. There's a great deal in here that said about God will do his part if you'll do your part. Remember there are two things necessary. You got that for the Holy Spirit? One thing doesn't work, ask God what to do. Keep trying different things and be persistent. Now that doesn't mean 24 hours. You don't wear the people out and they go to sleep on you. But if you know something else, if you didn't think to, to speak it, at that particular time, if you've done two or three things and you forgot one, go back. Be persistent in that regard. Make sure that you've covered all that you know to do. If after ministering to the individual the best you know how, there are still no visible results, then encourage the person to believe the healing has started. Don't let them go away thinking it just did not work. God don't love them, and you're out of your mind because you're, what you told me didn't work. Don't, you know, don't do yourself. Don't be defeated. But remind them that it started and the healing power has gone in. It's amazing how many will discover later that they were healed. I've received as many phone calls and reports afterwards from a week from the previous, from you people, and I've done that for nine years. Just as many come later. So don't give up on God. Don't give up on yourself as a healer or as a recipient, either one. Stay positive. Never do anything half-heartedly for, for the Lord. Have you ever noticed God doing things halfway? Just put a Band-Aid on you instead of healing you? God's not a halfway God. When in doubt, cast it out. When in doubt, grow it out. <laughs> okay? Those, those things, they're going to be just catchphrases. It's going to be part of your vocabulary. You've got what? In the name of Jesus, I cast it out by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, it just rings true. Once you get in the cycle of that, it's just going to roll out of you. After you have ministered healing to more than one thing, and you will find it helpful to go through the arm thing and the leg thing. Irregardless, if it's something inside or it's a physical, structural, skeletal thing that you've done, or if it's organs, do the leg and the arm thing. And maybe the pelvic thing. 
Went through two or three of those. Rick, the other night, and one gentleman, uh, was the last thing that I, I applied to him was the pelvic thing. And he stood there for a little bit, and I, I had my hands on his hands, and I saw a little twitch, and I let go. And I backed away. Am I telling the truth, brother? You're back there for my support. <laughs> I backed away because I didn't want people to think I was doing any of this. And he, all of a sudden, he started turning around. And, he, and I kept telling him, don't move your feet. If you do that, tell the people, don't move your feet because you'll, you'll minimize what the Holy Spirit's trying to do. He's not going to hurt you. He's not going to hurt your back. He's going to fix it. And he turned way around. He wound up with his arms out here. He put his arms back here. He bent over backwards, that, guy, that lady that didn't have rods anymore. He did everything. About, he even jumped up and down. And he screamed. Am I right? He screamed, my God has healed me completely. Now he got, and he was sweating. I mean, just rolling off him time that was done. And it wasn't that hot in that house. Oh, praise God. It's awesome to watch God. Before you lay hands on a person, be particularly cautious that you have someone standing behind him. Now go back to the video. You heard me talk about that before, to be cautious. Put him by a chair, put him up against the wall. You saw Charles and Francis going down just doing this. But did you see there was a catcher behind every one of them? All right, if you got that big a church, you got that many catchers, have at it. That's fine. Because it, it takes time to just stand there and minister to people. If you just, you know, if there's a mass thing that people have responded to, it's a general thing, the same prayer. Oftentimes they would just pray and then just start down applying. You tell them you're going to give them a shot of penicillin, and then you go by and give it to them. <laughs> okay? That's, that's the purpose. Uh, walk in boldness. Don't let fear stop you. Speak with authority. That doesn't mean speak loudly, but it, when you mean what you say, say it as you mean it. You know, you might, might say put on your mommy voice or your daddy voice. Or your invo outside voice instead of your indoor voice. But come up an octave just enough to make sure people understand you have authority and you're exercising it in their direction. There's a force field of power that comes out of you. I don't know that we've seen that by video. I've only shown two. But uh, Charles quite often would demonstrate that. Rather than the touch, he would back off and he would say, in the name of Jesus, and somebody five, ten feet away from him would fall out in the spirit. There's a force field around you. So the point that's going to be made here is get as close to the person as you can without being offensive. Don't get up there and start breathing in their face or don't blow on them. I really don't go along with that, okay? I know a lot of that's been done. But I, I think that's offensive, particularly if they got bad breath. <laughs> Don't be blowing on people. It's to represent the holy power of the Holy Spirit. But, you know, just get close to them, lay hands on them. That's a whole lot better. Okay. All right. But there is that around them. And if you stand close, uh, it says here, do it, do it in good taste. People don't like that presence when you get too close. Concentrate on one problem at a time when you minister healing. Don't try to roll it all together. Just see if you can fix one thing at a time and uh, then ask them, what do you feel? You know, what did you feel? Did you feel pain? Did you, has the pain gone away? Did you have some heat? Did you feel some movement? Get some kind of confirmation and then go to the next one. Well, here it goes. <laughs> You've heard this too many times from me. Healing the sick takes persistence and practice. You can't can't be enough of it. Can't be enough of it. We can call into being those things which are not as though they are. Romans 4.17. God has a whole warehouse of spare parts. It says a new tire is better than a retread. <laughs> and we know that because we see the retreads out there along the street, right? They come off. They don't work. They don't stick. Okay. Don't let people lose their healing through doubt and unbelief. Stay with them until they actually know that they're healed. Get them to manifest that healing. Get them to walk around. Do their, you know, swing their arms. Stuff that you just saw in the video. All of that works. I'm going to skip a few of these. Uh, someone needs healing in the private area of his body. How many remember all of this? 
You haven't put their hand in that area, put your hand on the back. Please don't forget that. Now, you saw, <laughs> I'm not talking against Charles tonight, but it sounds like it. But at one point, he just put his hands on that lady's uh, hips. Uh, that's not cool. You know, it doesn't take any longer to have them do it, and you put your hands on, and it just looks better, right? It looks better. Now, when you're, when you're working with the neck thing, uh, similar to the, to the pelvic thing, you apply the power. You put your hands up there and touch their face, their ears, their TMJ, their carotid artery, all these things that you touch, the base of this, uh, the brain back here. But you don't start doing one of these things. Does that feel better? <laughs> you know? Come on. If they've had a neck problem, it, you might worsen it. You say, turn your head to the right, to the left. What he was doing there, I think if you'd watched, his hands were loose. He was not doing any of that with that lady. And so don't you either. Just place your hands there so the power is going in. Okay? They're self-contained. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't allow yourself to become discouraged. That can happen. You know, first two or three times you do something uh, and it doesn't happen, be discouraged. It may not be you. It may be the person you're healing. Uh, there may be other, other reasons. I don't know. But uh, don't get discouraged because if you follow this and you know that you, you're spirit-filled, you've got that summit salvation and the power of the Holy Spirit uh, come upon you when you accept the baptism. Again, if you don't have that, ask for it. Your ministers will be glad to, to assist you in that. Since you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and he is the anointed one, then it's his anointing power that's always in you. So keep in mind that the anointing is not something that comes out and goes in periodically. If you got it, you got it. Okay? So don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Don't think he took it away from you because you didn't do it every day. All right? Don't judge God. Never forget to use wisdom, common sense, good judgment, discretion but don't be a flake. <laughs> don't do some of the things or you've heard about or maybe you've seen on television. Don't go there. It doesn't take all of that. You don't have to be forceful. You don't have to scream and holler and shake and roll on the ground and just get in a lather, you know, over doing this. Please don't do that. When ministering to someone, find out if he's saved. If he's not, then minister salvation. Now, they do not have to be saved to be ministered to. They can receive their healing without. Jesus, what was it, that demon-possessed man I always think of, come out of the, the caverns or the caves or whatever with chains and all, screaming and hollering, probably cussing and carrying on. He just cast out the demon, right? Then you can say, you know, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Get him, get him free first. Heal him. Because it... If they're in a condition that they hurt, they want that pain to go, and then you've got their undivided attention. Am I right? you got their undivided attention. They know something happened. It wasn't you, it wasn't them. It was a power that they haven't felt before. They're going to want some of that. Someone, if you're ministering to someone with a sore or an open cut or a discharge, do not place your hand directly on it. We talked about that before. Let them put their hand on it if they want to, and then you put your hand on top. Ministering to anyone, please find out if he's saved or not saved. Minister salvation, uh, the Holy Spirit, baptism, whatever. Then you can go into your minister role if you want to. Always determine if the person to whom you are ministering has received the baptism. Well, I already said that. Be bold, and having done all, stand, Ephesians 6, 13. Just stand. There's many things that you can do and not do, but there's always that one, just stand, believing. All right? Just stay there in their presence. You got in filled tonight. I'm encouraged to, with the music. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your presence, that's where I am strong. So you have a strength like that. Here you get infilled anew. You get refreshed. But you have that presence. So stand in front of somebody. Let the Holy Spirit continue to work. Uh, 
I don't know if I marked anything else here in particular. Study the spine in here. Study the spine. Do the apostat. Do some of the little simple things like that. The apostat, your, your living proof of that works. But if you can get something simple like that done with somebody, maybe they're an unbeliever. You just have them do that and do it to themselves. They say the words you tell them to say. And then they start losing weight. Then they come back. They come back. They're coming to you. They're coming on your porch, in your living room. Would you pray for me? That's what you want. Takes away that aggression aspect. You know, when they come by faith, that's what they did to Jesus. Came by faith. Now that can work even better than getting clear to you. You remember the woman of the issue of blood? 12 years, many physicians. She was healed when she left her door before she got to Jesus. You believe that? I like to believe that because she stepped out by faith. She could have been imprisoned. She could have been crucified, whatever for that. That was a mortal sin back then to be out in public with a flow of blood. But she was healed when she left the house. Now, it manifested when she touched his garment and he felt the power go out of him. Now, I'm going to tell you, you're going to feel some power go out of you. I've had two or three meetings since I've been through here, all of this. Not every meeting, but a lot of them. I was drained. I felt like somebody had opened a petcock somewhere and just let, let my energy, my spirit, just run right down my leg. I was so tired. But by the time I just get over here to my chalet, I was re replenished. God is faithful. God is very faithful. He will do anything and all things you want him to do. Uh, let's talk about my favorite scripture again. I've mentioned this early on. I don't know how many other times. And then I've got a little thing here I'm going to share. I've been talking about it for two weeks. I never brought it. Psalms 37. I want you to get used to this one. You can use it as I have. And I believe the good use each of it. And that's to encourage people. You've got to let them know that they're God's children. I don't care whether they're saved or not. If they're hurting you need to build up their faith, get them off of the pain for just a second to think about they could be healed, get their mind going in the right direction, give them something positive, give them some scriptures. You've got a whole list of them back there or you've already taken them. Psalms 37 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Thou shalt dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Various uh, translations will say this a little different. But trust in the Lord. Delight thyself. Encourage them to speak these things, to say them out loud, to put their name in some of these scriptures. Have you ever tried that as you read scripture? Put your name in there. Personalize it. It was written for you as an individual. God intentionally orchestrated that through the authors of the Bible. That you can put your name in there. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. These are all encouraging, strengthful words. Use your scriptures. Have your Bible with you along with these others. These are good support. These are, these are biblical uh, happenstances proved out over ministries and many ministries as well as the hunters. But be, encourage them. And, and, and over where it says, well, my interpretation, I think it's out of uh, New Living Translation, is don't grow impatient with the Lord any more than yourself. Do not do that. But walk faithfully along the path, his path. Faithfully. Walk by faith. Okay? Don't let it get watered down. There's a whole raft of people right outside those doors that will water down your faith. You let them. Don't listen to them. Get away from them. You know, I mean, don't tell them get lost or you know, throw things at them, but do not hang around those people that everything comes out of their mouth is negative because it has its effect. It will eventually creep into you. Am I right? Now, uh, this little book I've been talking about to some of you, I don't know whether I did in this class or not, just do through do, do something. This is a pastor, Kevin DeYoung, senior pastor of the University 
Reformed Church in East Lansing, Michigan, across the street from Michigan State University. Wrote this little book. He's written some others. I found this in Marilyn Hickey's stuff she was clearing out of her library. <laughs> she said, take it, Richard. I said, I got it. It says, just do something. It's a liberating approach to finding God's will. Now, I'm sure many of you haven't thought about this, but I'm going to prick your minds tonight, and then I want you to do something with it. It says, then, or, the liberating approach to finding God's will, or how to make a decision without dreams, visions, fleeces, impressions, open doors, random Bible verses, casting lots, liver shivers, and writing in the sky. I pray to God none of you relate to any of that. But you might. You think back. Well, the chapter I want to reference just to start with here, it called, it's called Directionally Challenged. I know some people are, uh, you know, vertically challenged. They'd like to be taller. I got a daughter like that. I told her about that. Scoliosis being healed. She said, Daddy, when you get down here, <laughs> I'm going to South Carolina. I'll take a prayer like that. I want to be taller. <laughs> Why are so many Christians dependent to, uh, desperate to find out God's plan for their lives? Why are publishers still willing to crank out will of God books like this one? <laughs> Even though there are a bazillion others on the market like them. Why do millions of Christians in this country spend buckets of time and energy waiting for the will of God to be revealed? And why do we fret about the will of God like it's some nuclear warhead pointing at our future happiness? And then he goes into five suggestions. I'll encompass those pretty quick and then get to the point of this. Uh, number one, the first reason we seek to know God's specific will of direction for us, we want to please him. We want to please Him. There's nothing wrong with that. And God loves to be pleased. He wants you sitting on His lap looking at His face. Tell me something good, Papa. Right? <laughs> the second reason for some of us uh, to seek God's will of direction is because we are by nature quite timid. Any of you want to claim that? I don't see any heads. Oh, Marge, give me that. If you're not timid. God didn't put that in your makeup. Uh -uh. Any, more than you did, any more than you did Debbie over here. <laughs> Timidity, go in the name of Jesus. Okay? Cast it out. She used to be? Well, maybe back on the, back on the farm when she was milking the cows, maybe. That's been too long ago. I don't. Okay. Okay. Quite timid. Uh, some Christians need encouragement to think before they act. Others need encouragement to act after they think. Ooh. That's got to hit somebody. <laughs> One of those or the other. We've all done that. Encouragement to act after they think or to... <laughs> Uh, and be encouraged to think before they act. I've known impetuous Christians, he says, but in my personal experience, I've seen more who are paralyzed by indecision and inactivity. Have we been there? Some things that just put you in the ozone. Don't want to go there. Don't want to even consider, don't talk to me about it. I, I don't want to know about that. Uh, you know, you just tune things out. But it may be something the Lord's trying to give you, teach you. Now, let's get to the root here. It goes over here and it says, With so many choices, it's no surprise that we're always thinking about greener grass on the other side of the fence. It's an old term. Still works. <laughs> we are always pondering what could be better or what might be nicer about something or someone new. Decide. It says here the word comes from the Latin word decidere. D-E-C-I-D-E-R-E. -E -E, meaning to cut off. 
to cut off. You decide to do something, you probably change directions, right? Change attitudes, change whatever. Change your clothes, change where you shop. When you decide, you're cutting off something else. Now, this is the rest of it. Decidere means to cut off, which explains why decisions are so hard these days. We can't stand the thought of cutting off any of our options. If we choose A, we feel the sting of not having B and C and D. As a result, every choice feels worse than no choice at all. And when we do make an important choice, we end up with buyer's remorse, wondering if we are settling for second best. Or worse yet, we end up living in our parents' basement indefinitely as we try to find ourselves and hear God's voice. <laughs> That's a little extreme. But you know as well as I do, there's some out there. Okay. Whew. <laughs> our freedom to do anything and go anywhere ends up feeling like bondage more than liberty because decision-making feels like pain and not pleasure. How many of us do not like change? <laughs> I wasn't going to look at you, but I can't miss that hand up in here. <laughs> we had that discussion before. I ain't going there. <laughs> That's personal between her and I. But she does, okay? Doesn't like change. So I'm sure you move anything in her house, she's going to tell you about it. That's where it belongs. You leave it there. Okay, this goes on to say, let's not spiritualize our inability to make decisions in the quest of discovering God's will. Let's not spiritualize our inability to make decisions in the quest to discover God's will. You're shooting yourself in the foot. These things that you came to class, you wanted to learn, and of course I perceived that that's why you were here and you wanted to, and I know you have, but you had to make a decision. You guys gave up sitting in front of the television or playing with the grandkids or whatever you do on Wednesday nights if you don't come to church, right? What are you guys giggling about here? What, what do you do? Huh? There's nothing on TV tonight. That's why she showed up. There's nothing else to do. You have to make a change, guys. You have to commit yourself to something. And if you don't commit yourself to anything, it probably never will happen, right? And you need to pick out the positive things to concentrate on. Don't worry about the junk that's going on out there. And don't, don't stop by the grocery store or the, gro or the garage where you're getting the car serviced and, and create part of the argument, you know, give your opinion. It's wasted time. You're losing hot air. You might need that inside. <laughs> Some of these people will argue just because the sun came up. <laughs> Don't buy into those kind of things. Be positive. Let God know that you're positive. You know, he will do wondrous things if you just get in tune with him. Well, how do I do that? Well, it's in here. It's in the Word. We're running long, and here I am still jabbering. But I want to cement some of these things into you, and you keep me from weeping because I'm leaving. So, but <laughs> uh, we will open it up for for ministry, and I, my buddy here may have a message in the meantime. Uh, so we'll call it a close this time. Open for questions and for healing. And but I'll let uh, Pastor Harry come forward. <laughs>